Hi everyone, welcome back to Footy Leagues Around the World. It is your favorite AI YouTube presenter, Kevin. It has been 25 years since the creator of this channel, Ryan, hinted at this episode. And now, we can all stop holding our breath. Today, we will be exploring the Football Pyramid of Vatican City. Footy leagues around the world. Footy leagues, heck yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Hey guys, it's Ryan, back from the dead, presumably, because I couldn't keep the bit going. Before we dive into Vatican City, just a quick reminder to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying our content. We've amassed over 100 subscribers since last month, which is incredible. And now we have eclipsed 900 in total, so thank you all so much for the support and for joining this community. Without further ado, let's dive into the football pyramid of Vatican City. Vatican City is a landlocked sovereign country and city-state located within Rome, Italy. It became independent from Italy in 1929 and is fully under the control of the Holy See, essentially the Pope and the Catholic Church. Vatican City is the capital of Vatican City as it is a city-state. It has a total land area of half a kilometer or 0.19 square miles. Its population is 764 according to 2023 estimates and its official language is Italian. Despite Vatican City's incredibly small size, it has way more football than you might expect. The country's top football league is called the Vatican City Championship or Campionato della Città del Vaticano in Italian. Made up of eight teams, teams are comprised of workers representing various state departments. For example, the current champions, Representativa OPBG, are employees of the local children's hospital. There is also Musee Vaticani, which is made up of employees from the Vatican Museums, FC Guardia, which consists of members of the Pontifical Swiss Guard, and even a team made up of employees of the Vatican's Secret Archive. Now that's a team I would like to take out for drinks. While it's unclear to me how many games are played per season, and if there is relegation, my gut tells me that there isn't, but I'm not 100% sure. What I can tell you is that the league takes place between October and May, with a two-month break in December and January. As the league is amateur, matches and training must take place outside of work hours, and matches usually take place on Mondays and Tuesdays. Equipment and uniforms are occasionally donated by organizations and benefactors, with deficits being covered by the Vatican government. All matches are played at the Associazione Sportiva La Sale complex in Western Rome. There are some interesting rules in this league, but we'll cover those later in the episode. Besides its single league, this portion of the Vatican City football pyramid also has two cup competitions. The first is the Copa Vaticana held between the eight teams that compete in the Vatican City Championship. In the initial stage of the competition, teams are split into two groups of four and play each other in a set number of games. It is unclear how many games each team plays or how the winner is ultimately determined. If you know, let me know in the comments below. The most successful team in this competition has been Dear Seco, or this, which I am not going to try to pronounce, which translates to the Economic Services Directorate. They have won five cups. The most recent winners were the employees of the Children's Hospital. There is also the Supercopa, a single match played at the beginning of every season between the winner of the league from the previous year and the winner of the cup from the previous year. The Vatican Museums have the most Supercopa titles with three. But wait, there's more. Vatican City also at one point had an annual football tournament called the Clericus Cup, which saw teams from various Roman colleges and seminaries play against each other. This meant that players within the league were usually seminarians studying to be Roman Catholic priests, or some that were already fully ordained priests. Officially, the goal of this league was to reinvigorate the tradition of sport in the Christian community, and has been called the clerical equivalent of soccer's World Cup. The Cup got its start in 2003, its first official season was 2007, and eventually the league grew to 16 teams in 2009 with 15 teams representing international seminaries, plus the Pontifical Gregorian University of Rome. 
It is unclear how many games were played per season, but I do know that teams were divided into two divisions initially, Division A and Division B, and these 16 teams competed for eight playoff spots, which I assume were awarded to the top four teams in each division. From here, it's unclear how many games were played until a champion was crowned. Now, the Clericus Cup is noteworthy for a few reasons, even more so than the Vatican City Championship. For one, fans got so rowdy in the early days of the league that it forced the local government to pass an ordinance banning the use of tambourines, percussion instruments, and loudspeakers during morning hours, aka when most of the league's games were played. Mind you, these crowds were made up presumably of other priests, so that's a fun fact. The second noteworthy aspect of this league is its use of a blue card instead of the traditional yellow and red cards. If a player committed a penalty for unsportsmanlike play, they were shown a blue card, which forced the player to sit on a bench for five minutes before they were allowed back into the game. This was later labeled the Sin Bin by British media. The most successful club in the tournament's history was Collegio Urbano, or the Pontifical Urban University, which won four titles. Now I keep using the past tense because it doesn't appear that this tournament exists anymore. It was initially canceled in 2020 due to C19, but has never taken place since. Hopefully the tournament will eventually come back, but who really knows. According to the official Vatican Sports website, references to ancestors of the game of football in the Vatican date back to 1521, when an alleged Florentine football match was played in the presence of Pope Leo X. The first organized football league, as we know the game today, took place at the Vatican in 1947 between four teams. A final was held, but soon after, the league was suspended because of fierce competitiveness. Only friendly matches were allowed for the next two decades until another league was formed in 1966. Seven teams competed during this first season, with employees from the Vatican newspaper claiming the first championship. The current league was founded in 1972 as the Copa Amicazia, later renamed the Vatican City Championship. The Copa Vaticana, as we know it today, was formed in 1985, the Supercopa in 2005, and the Clericus Cup in 2007. Now within the Clericus Cup, we've already mentioned the blue card, which is truly unique to Vatican City football. There is also a unique player role within the Vatican City Championship. This rule states that teams are permitted to field one outside player from Italian amateur teams to play as a goalkeeper. Since all of the leagues within Vatican City are amateur, there are no rules around transfers or foreign player limits. Speaking of players, there are quite a diverse group of them playing football within Vatican City's various leagues. As of the 2010 Clericus Cup, for example, the 16 teams that competed in the competition fielded players from 65 countries around the world a majority of them coming from Brazil, Italy, Mexico, and the United States. Vatican City does have both a men's and women's national team. They don't play many games, and neither are FIFA or UEFA affiliated. These teams, like the Vatican City Championship teams, are made up entirely of employees of the Vatican. For those that can't go to games, you are totally out of luck. As every league in Vatican City is amateur, I have not found any sources stating that games of any kind are broadcasted anywhere. Although this is a live stream that I would love to watch. Some videos of the league and the Vatican City national team can be found online, but most of these videos are fairly old and their quality can be shoddy. If you have any more information about football in Vatican City that you think I should know, you know what to do. Leave a comment or a link below. Well, that's it for Vatican City. Truly a dream episode for me that I'm so glad to be finally getting around to making. As always, thank you for watching and being a football weirdo like me. Until next time, happy football watching.